So this is going to be a bit of a dual purpose video and it's going to be an unboxing and a teardown. This is a customer return, kind of complicated, but uh, basically they decided to throw the items just back in a box with minimal or no packaging. I haven't opened it yet, so I know that the switches are basically bouncing around loose in the box. And as you can see, the box is heavily creased and damaged, rounded at points. Looks like some of the tape is broken loose even. So, the box didn't fare well, since there was nothing to stop the heavy items internally from bouncing around and causing damage. There should be three switches in here that weigh about 10 pounds each. So first, I'm going to open up the box. Hopefully there's no personal information in here because I will have to figure out how to edit that up. It looks like they used some packaging, that's interesting. I had a knife. I didn't, didn't feel like grabbing one though. Oh. There we go. Alright. Ooh, yeah, they do not know what they're doing with packaging. <laughs> so, let's see here. They used air quilts. And. There's a perforation right here, but these two rows got damaged from impact, so they've been popped. These two rows are intact, this row's shot, this row's intact, that row's shot. So, basically lost half of the bubble wrap's protection right there. This stuff all appears to be intact. Oof. And they didn't provide any front protection for the switches. It looks like they just kind of stuffed the, I shouldn't call it bubble wrap, the air quilts in here rather than wrapping the item. Which is kind of an odd choice. This is not going to protect anything. The bottom of the switches are just sitting at the bottom of the box. And a lot of these other air quilts, I mean, this one's been pretty much completely compromised. I don't think there might be a row here that's intact. These are all smashed flat. This uh, entire section between perforations is actually intact. Also, this stuff's a bit strange because it, uh, it inflates in a zigzag pattern. I'm not sure if that's better or worse. These are completely gone. So it was packed better than I thought it was. Because my expectation was to open the box and it's going to be like this. <laughs> but let's see how the switch is held up. So there's no... There's no major damage to this. One. That's a little bit pulled away there. I'm not sure how that happened. Oh, faceplate's busted. That's unfortunate. Same deal with this one. Faceplate's busted. Same odd point of damage there. It must have sustained a corner impact that caused this to bulge out. Also, internal rattling, so the component on the board must have gotten busted off. This one, the, um, uh, I'm not sure what you call these. These are just metal, metal tabs that you hook the cable retention module or piece into. 
those got bent. This one doesn't have the weird little bulge right there, so that's interesting. And yeah, this faceplate's damaged as well. So it goes to show that poor packaging doesn't necessarily mean your item's going to get damaged, but it's definitely not going to uh, not damage your item. And this one doesn't rattle. So, we're done with that box. I think, let's see, that one doesn't rattle. Oh, no, that one has the rattle. I think I'm gonna tear that one apart because it has a rattle to it. And I'm curious to see what came loose. So I'm gonna fix my camera angle here real quick and I'll be back. All right, got a little bit better of a camera angle now. And I'm going to take this apart. I'm not sure what I'm going to see internally. I'm a little disappointed they were so poorly packed because I wanted to see if I could repair these. Um, this one I'm not going to be, prob I'm probably not going to plug in because it has something loose internally that's broken off the board. The other ones I probably will even though I shouldn't. The buyer said that two of these they couldn't get past the, uh, or not couldn't get past, they couldn't reset the switch to defaults and get rid of the password. And one of them's dead. And these were originally shipped freight on a pallet, so I, I know for sure that I shouldn't have to worry about like drop damage and stuff compared to traditional shipping, as long as the uh, freight people didn't try to ram the pallet with a forklift and jab it inside or drop it off their loading dock. <laughs> I am a little disappointed that the customer packed these so poorly though because I was hoping to at least try to fix them. Because I have parts. I have I have a few spare power supplies and I have uh, some fans and some other stuff. I didn't think to save any faceplates because I wasn't expecting to have to do this. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. Also, I forgot to mention, this is the EX2200-48T-4G. It's a 48 port gigabit switch with four SFP ports. One more screw and we'll be in. Internally, this is gonna look pretty much the same as the 2200-24P 4G switch I tore apart. It's just gonna have a few more chips for the switching and stuff. Also, this doesn't have the uh, PoE riser board and it's missing the pin headers for that to connect to, and it has a smaller power supply. So I actually have the 24P power supply over here still, and in this orientation, as you can see, the PCV is a lot bigger. Also, this doesn't have the cooling fan for the power supply. So, yeah, definitely a lot beefier. Also, more pins or power outputs. I mean, so it has the Motherboard power, I guess you call it. And then this, I forget. I think one of these went into the riser board and there might've been another one that, this other one went into the plug, plugged into the motherboard somewhere. But let's see if we can find what broke. 
I don't see the loose bit anywhere, so we're gonna tip it over and shake it. Looks like there's a bunch of like gnats in this thing, which is cool. <laughs> oh, I think I see what broke. Power supplies in the way. Should be in frame. Yep. Alright, I actually figured it out without even having to take this out, but I want to take this out anyways to retrieve the piece. I think there's another one right there. Yeah. There it is. No, oh, it broke into more pieces. That's what was rattling inside of this. And it's the top little piece of the rivet to this insulator plastic. So, not a huge deal. I'll probably end up trying to fix this one as well. Um, I'm not going to get destructive on this one and pop the heat sinks off. These heat sinks are attached with uh, thermal adhesive and then stainless steel pans that are soldered into the board. But yeah, pretty much with these Juniper switches and most switches in general, the only difference between the 24 and 48 port variants is there's just more stuff internally. Like if this was a 24T switch, basically these components would be gone and you just have bare PCB and then the front would be blanked out. I don't remember if the 24T has these two big heat sinks or not. I would have to refer back to previous videos, but otherwise, yeah, it's really not that much of a difference. These switches are generally designed to be kind of, um, I guess, modular internally, where to add the functionality, they just add the parts that are needed rather than having like a completely different board. There are exceptions to that, but for the most part, they're basically all the same PCB, just added components for more ports, maybe some more power delivery and stuff too, since it would require more power to run. But I believe like between the 24T and the 48T, I, I believe these use the same power supply. I think you will run into like with the PoE variants, I think you will run into bigger power supplies between or there's a diff there's a difference between the 24p and like the 20 or the 48p so but that that just comes down to poe budget i believe the 48p version of the ex2200 series switches has a higher power budget than the 24p i would have to look that up though to say for certain but that's generally how how it all breaks down it's just more components, different power supplies. So hopefully that was interesting. Thanks for watching.